Okay, what we're looking at here is a new wave of aluminum big block Chevrolet heads. These heads are sold in the U.S., I believe primarily, by a company called KMJ Performance out of Story City, Iowa. The ones on the left is their new Assault head, which is 345cc runner volume. The head on the right are a brand new pair of dark 345 heads. You might remember this head in one of my earlier videos where I was complaining about the factory valve job and the guides on the head and me having to go in here and redo all this and the quality of workmanship on it out of the box. That's the head. The person who owns the head, Tony Weatherford, had not yet put him on an engine. He's getting the bottom end stuff, which he's about got done, and I was just lucky enough to be able to say, hey, I got this head 345cc's open chamber, this head 345cc's open chamber, to compare the Dart offering versus the new Assault head offering from KMJ. Now, to do a fair comparison, what we're looking for is thickness in the ports, guide shape, uh, bowls, what the ports look like from a stock bolt-on point of view and from a performance point of view. Now, I intend to give y'all all the information on this, but just right off the bat, I will have to say this. It is amazing to see how well this China head at 345 cc's compares to the dart head. I mean, you can just look. I got my sonic checker out there. That's my BHJ CWG-2 sonic checker, the best in the planet. Okay, we're going to be sonicking. I got my mapping stuff out. We're going to tiger stripe the ports. I'm going to map it. I'm going to give you the numbers, the thicknesses, some measurements, and we're going to pair shape to shape, thickness to thickness, so you can make an intelligent decision. But it's awful hard to deny that these heads here, Bear, came to my door. The invoice was in the box. Shipping included $701 for the... I'm pretty sure, I'm going to look it up on the net, but if I'm thinking right, Tony paid $2,850 for a pair of these, but they did have the valves and springs and, and guide plates on them. We both know that don't make no difference as far as, I mean, not a big difference. Uh, there might be what? Valves uh, come from SI. They're good grade stainless. All the parts and components with the heads. Um, maybe, and I say maybe, $600. So what you're looking at here is a pair of heads that's less than half the price. Now, if these things turn out to be something special, like I'm thinking they are, because just doing a, a heads-up look-see, they look awful good to me. And if the port thicknesses and the other stuff in the head turns out to be what I want it to be, Dart and Brodex, you guys are in some seriously deep doo-doo. Because these things are going to sell like hotcakes like there's no tomorrow. Now, I've, I've fooled with the Pro Comp Big Blocks and some other different ones, but these here have got some features in them. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And I'm going to go and put this out in the open to say if the thicknesses are there, this Ch uh, China Assault Head is going to outperform and outflow the dark heads up, head to head, porting wise because it's got a couple of features in it that's going to make it absolutely kick the fire out of them darts. And I'm just, I'm beside myself on it. I, I, I'm really fortunate from my understanding. This is one of the first batch or first few batches of these heads to come into the United States. And I would like to thank the person. He called me on the phone and uh, had asked me about doing a comparison. And at the time... He didn't even know, which I didn't either, that Tony hadn't yet put these on. So this makes it a heads-up battle of the battle of the aluminum to see who's going to be the top contender on the 345cc runner game because this would be what you'd use to build a 500 cubic inch big block, which would be 
Typically, your 496 motors, which would be a stock 454 with a little bit of stroke on the crank, a 387, a 386 rod, uh, excuse me, uh, and this is just absolutely incredible. Um, so let's go on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start mapping the ports out. I'll get back to you in a few minutes. We're going to map the critical areas of measurement and then look at some differences in the ports. I want to show you what I've seen. Um, and there you go. So the white gloves are taken off. May the better head win. Right off the bat, I wanted to show you. This is a 2 300 and 188 valve. And looking at the valve seat, uh, there's extra, excuse me, there's extra thickness seat or iron seat. I would say you could probably, I'd know more about it when I do the valve jobs to these. Um, I would say that a 2350 valve would be no problem because the 2 the two 300 is leaving plenty of seat meat out diameter wise. Of course, I wouldn't want to go no bigger on the exhaust, but it looks like it could probably take a 1900 without a problem. So right off the bat, it's the same as the Dart, the 2350, the Dart's capable of. So they're right there beside each other. But isn't that a beautiful sight, man? That is just wall-to-wall -wall valve. Lord of mercy. Now, as we take the valves out, I want you to take one more look at something before we start. Let me see if I can get you a better view. Okay, looking at the bowl and the um, valve guide area shows some interesting things in comparison to the dart. Off the bat, by looking at it, and I can't say until I go in there and make a math plot of it. You see this hump? That hump right there is for the spring perch. The dart heads don't have this pump. It's a uh, uh, hump. It's perfectly straight. So most people would say, well, that's going to be in the way. That's airflow. That might be true. But for them to do that means that this assault head, they raise the roof so high in order to get a better port trajectory that they've about went through. And that's just really good news because the darts are just straight. Uh, I don't know how close they are. The sonic checking is probably going to give me an indicator. But also, notice this. Look at this guide. Okay, it does have protrusion. Some of it's going to have to come down. I'd say about 50, 60 thousandths, which is going to dig into the aluminum right there. But look at the hump they got here. Well, I can feather it. Good Lord, I can really shape that turkey. And pull this in and try to re-round it right here. I'm not I'm not a stickler for these guys that like these bobtails because I've already proven that they cost horsepower and don't make it in eight out of ten applications. So, but just right off the bat, man, look at that relationship where the spring perch goes down into the head. This thing must be raised all the way sky high to the roof where that protrudes. Now, on my race motors, one of the things I do, or a performance motor, if, that, if this was my head, this is what I would do. I would, I would I would, go in here, reshape all this, cut all that, and conform it bullet nose, pull it in, and I'd take my egg and chop on that till it busted through. You heard me right. I want it to bust through the roof because I would use the spring cups and put them on and put a touch of epoxy on top of the cups then you compress it with a single outer spring till it squishes the epoxy out of there that way I'm going to I would probably totally get rid of this hump with maybe just an edge and I can touch that a little bit on the metal that's what I do on my performance motors because I'm greedy and I want that roof because that roof on these turkeys is where it's happening and right here this head wins in this area, hands down. Guide to roof to spring perch. The assault head just kicked the fire out of the dart head. There is no comparison. This right here is would, would win over that in this area. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next area. Let's look at some other things on here and, and the mapping procedure. What I'm doing right now is we're doing a mapping test. We're going to set the dimensions and we're going to write actual measurements that we pull out of the dart head on the end and then the assault head over here on the side. 
I'm going to get you a little bit close up on my paperwork and the runner so you can see how I'm doing this. What this is going to do is tell us the dimensions, length, times, width, so we can look at the port, see how each company went about getting the cross-sectional areas that they wanted. Once them numbers are down, then we can take the sonic checker and put on top of it and be able to kind of look at the thicknesses and the areas of meat that they want to remove it and what they do. This is going to tell us a great deal about the inside port dimensions, the thickness, the aluminum they gave us to shape and do what we want to do, and just the overall look at the cylinder head from an inside point of view. You can see for closeness what I've done as I went in there and marked the port up. Each one of them lines represents a distance. I might use either 300 thousandths or 500, a half inch, whatever. But I just go in there and I map them because what you've got going on here is this port is your straight port. As everybody in the big block world knows, the, the end ports are more straight in line. And because of the way they design the, the valve arrangement, which is intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, and spreading them like this on the standard port location in order to make that distance to the valve equal for it to work, this port here is the dreaded hook port which takes a dramatic turn in and changes. Balancing the two runners so that they both get an equal amount of air is the real trick. Now it's going to see interesting to see how dart and assault went about it what you're looking at here is the dart head right now there is one thing i wanted to point out that i noticed right off the bat when you take your caliper and you measure the overall height from the deck surface to the flange the assault head is a, right at a hundred and fifty thousandths taller than the dart. The dart is a lot shorter, which that falls into play, if you remember, with what I was telling you about how the assault head actually has part of the spring perch coming off in the roof of the port. Uh, they really went sky high. To see this on the dart, you have to get into the 365 series. So, I just wanted to point that out that the Assault is 150 taller deck surface to flange and the port is moved more toward the roof. Trying to give it more of a raised runner approach which I like that on the Assault head a lot better. I'll take the measurements, bring over here on my paperwork and as you can see I'll transfer them right over to the paperwork to give you a length and width dimension. I'll be doing this for a couple of hours. It'll take easily to get this. Once I have them numbers, then I'll draw the sonic map and start giving you the sonic pulses at different thicknesses.